What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn B. Frizzell. Today we are coming to you from the 29th floor of City Hall, where our special guest has invited us to his office to talk to him. In 2015, he started off in city government as third district at large city councilman. On August 1st, 2019, he was sworn in as the 55th mayor yes, of Kansas City, Missouri. Let's give a warm what's up, Kansas City. Welcome to Mayor Quentin Lucas. So what's up, Kansas City? It's good to be with you again. I, I feel like it was just yesterday I was running for city council and was on What's Up, Kansas City. We remember it all too well. We thank you for the support throughout the years. Let's get down to business, but before we do, uh, let's talk about the big day, okay? Um, 54, Super Bowl 54. Yes, yes, sir. Fourth quarter, just over oh. nine minutes left. Kansas City Chiefs were down 31 to 20. Did you believe in your soul that our hometown will pull through to get the victory? Man, so yeah, remember at that point, we're down 20 to 10, and then we end up winning 31 to 20. It was an amazing uh, three touchdowns on answered points. I think I always believed because I knew that uh, I've been through the playoffs with this team, right? We were down in every playoff game, not that late, but I'll admit there was a moment where everybody was kind of saying, it don't look good, particularly because San Francisco's defense was probably our most challenging one in the entire playoffs. But look, I was a believer. I was lucky enough, blessed enough to be at the Super Bowl, and it is probably one of the greatest days of my life. I bet the suspense was building like nothing else in that stadium. Uh, what was your Miami Super Bowl experience like? I read somewhere, uh, Mary Lucas, that there were three African American yes, players that's right. together in one city. That's right. For the now, first time? Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, first of all, the. Uh, Mayor of San Francisco is a cool sister by the name of London Breed. I had a chance to, I got it on Friday of the Super Bowl weekend, and so I ended up spending a lot of Saturday with Mayor Breed, um, with the mayor of Miami Gardens, which is where the stadium actually is, with his brother, um, and then actually Latino is the mayor of the city of Miami, and I were spending lots of time together. I mean, it was just kind of cool seeing this many people of color uh, that are running big, impressive cities. All of our city, none of our cities are majority black, Right, but all of us, I think, have shown what good, talented African American leadership can do. Awesome, Mayor Lucas, you delivered your State of the City address at Center High School. Yes, the sir. Kansas City Star reported you championed leg legislation to get firearms off the city street. That's right. The fact is, 151 people last year were lost to homicide. 16 plus people lost to homicide so far this year. Urban League reported in its uh, 2019 State of the Black Kansas City address that 77% of murder victims come from the city's black population. What can your citizens expect from you as follow-up? I mean, everything, man. That's, that's just the beginning uh, in terms of how we're starting to address violent crime and gun violence. But we have clearly a lot more work to do. What that includes is, you know, you'll see in this budget more funding for social workers. Mm -hmm. You'll see more funding for getting us to teach conflict resolution in a lot of our high schools in Kansas City. Southeast High School has a wonderful program that does it now. I want to see it at every Kansas City, Missouri high school, and frankly, in a lot of the other districts, Center, Grandview, Hickman. Um, and so, I mean, I think really this is just the beginning. I'm not going to quit until we have dramatically reduced the number of homicides we have in our city. We should never get used to 148 people getting murdered, 500 people getting shot um, just in one year. Uh, you mentioned something about you would have, to, if you if it called for it, you would go to Jefferson City every week to make friends, to make sure that right. the, the crime problem stopped. And I'm paraphrasing you there. Um, what might it take outside of our normal comfort zone for uh, us to reduce the homicide rate, particularly in our urban core? You know, the word I've been thinking of a lot lately is empathy. Right, we need more people who try to understand their fellow man, more, more people in the community that are understanding somebody else's struggle, more officers that are understanding somebody's struggle, people, more people understanding the officer's struggle, right? I mean, that's the sort of thing we need that's beyond legislators, beyond a governor, beyond a mayor. So that is one that matters to me a lot. But uh, another thing we do, I think we need to bring to Jefferson City, to Washington, this understanding of how this carnage is killing too many of our community. Right. You know, What's Up Kansas City brought a 17-year-old intern here today. Uh, there are too many teenagers in our city that aren't having opportunities to intern, right. but are instead dealing with friends getting killed, right? Friends getting shot, mm -hmm. all these sorts of things that folks shouldn't be dealing with. And that's trauma that takes that's away right. with right. the and, learning process. And, and as you know, right, it takes away from the learning process, and that's not trauma you get over on day one. No, I mean, we make no, this mistake, you and I both from the community. 
That stuff sticks with you. You remember you remember your friend who got murdered years ago. You remember, Lord knows if it's a family member, you, you know that and remember that. And that impacts how we live in our community each day. So we need to make sure we are sharing that message with everyone. Fair enough. Uh, earlier I referenced the Greater Kansas City Urban League State of the Black Kansas City Report. In terms of economics, its key findings suggested that, uh, uh, excuse me, in terms of economics, health, education, social justice, and civic engagement combined as a whole, White Kansas City is are at 100% ownership of the pie. Blacks in Kansas City are missing 27% of the pie. That's when you compare the two. Uh, so that puts us just at 73%. The median household income for blacks is $37,968. The median household income for whites is $70,000.78. Uh, you said we must come to the tent, excuse me, this is what Greg when Grant said, and I would ask for your response, we must come to the table with the mindset, the will, and the resolve to deconstruct the structural and systematic barriers that have marginalized and disfranchised African Americans all these years. And that comes from Ms. Gwen Grant, who's currently the president of the Greater Kansas City Branch of the Urban League. Mayor Lucas, what are your administration's plans to provide affordable housing, transit services, access to affordable credit, for minority business owners and uh, the opportunity to invest in quality services in the urban core. So, I mean, that, that's like every policy that we have. So um, I'll admit that it takes more than 40 minutes. I mean, if I have 40 minutes, I'll tell you all of them, but a few things, right? You've heard about our investment. Share a few. Yeah, you've heard about our investment in zero fare public transit, free buses in Kansas City. I think that that will immediately cause uh, an opportunity for greater equity and how we are funding transportation, better equity, and how people can get around in Kansas City. And frankly, it's going to help a lot of poor people in Kansas City. And that, and that is something that I think matters. I said in my State of the City speech the other day, too often we focus on what I call trickle-down economic development, just like trickle-down economics of the 80s, right? where there's been this view in local government for too long that if you only help the rich people, then it's going to end up creating jobs on the end and all that sort of stuff. That ain't working. Right? I've always lived on the east side of Kansas City, and I love it that people have been telling me for decades, oh, we put a giant super tip on the plaza. If we do some big project downtown, it's always going to just move over in momentum. That ain't happening, and we haven't seen that happen, and frankly, we need to try to work to improve that. So zero fare transit is one big part of, of what we're trying to do. I continue to work towards changing how our criminal justice system in Kansas City, particularly on the municipal court level, works. I'll be issuing pardons starting next week for misdemeanor marijuana offenses. My view on that is for people who have gotten themselves tripped up over time, right? I wanna make sure that you, you have a second chance. And, and the other thing that just annoys me about criminal justice right now, you know, Colorado marijuana is legal, Missouri's about to get legalized medical marijuana, all that sort of stuff, but we're still treating people who get in trouble like they need to, you know, get this long penalty or anything of that sort thereafter. I'm against that, I think it needs to change, and it's something that we will change soon. On housing, we continue to invest, particularly in rental assistance for people. There are a lot of people who one month, two months, they can't pay their rent. What ends up happening? They get kicked out of their place, they have to find a new place. That usually is costing you thousands of dollars for people who don't have it. Whereas if we gave people a stop gap, $100, $200, $300, $300, that gives you an opportunity to try to make some change in deficits. Okay. Uh, Mayor Lucas, this is kind of the second part to this question. There are now more check cashers and payday, payday lending outlets than there are McDonald's, restaurants, Burger King's, Target stores, JCPenney locations, Sears, and Walmarts combined. Councilwoman Kennedy has said big ticket developments such as luxury downtown apartments and hotels have distracted City Hall for far too long. Now is the time to focus on the residents of the city and stabilize their communities. Uh, does the answer to how we do that with time efficiency lie and perhaps soliciting fe federal and private funds to build a, a, a the large billion dollar size venture capital funds that today are utilized and operated by mainly wealthy white people to positively control the kinds of investments and wealth generated in our urban core? So do we have to create our own venture? Uh, do we, do we have to do we need to appeal to these mm -hmm. sources to create our own venture capital funds? If so, what are we waiting for? Um, so short answer, one of the references was made to uh, federal government dollars to support us. Don't exist. Don't exist. Don't rely on the federal government. President Trump right now is trying to completely eliminate almost every good urban housing program 
through the Department of Housing and Urban Development, eliminating the Community Development Block Grant, which brings $8 million a year to Kansas City, particularly poor people in Kansas City. So, right. So, so my jam is, yeah, make sure you vote. And this primary is coming up in Missouri, by the way. Uh, for those who are looking to vote in the Missouri primary, make sure you do that. Have your voice heard in the, in the presidential election. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, on the second part, though, yes, we should be creating our own uh, venture capital funds. We need to invest in a different way. Economic development, Councilman Kennedy was right about something. It can't just be a story of, um, you know, let's fix up just one shopping center. Let's fix up one building. It needs to be, how do we build wealth in our community? How do we create more opportunities for people to move from renting to home ownership? Mm -hmm. Because so many people that are paying eight, nine hundred dollars a month for rent, thousand dollars in some cases in the inner city of Kansas City, can be folks that are paying four hundred, five hundred dollars for a mortgage, right? Those are the sort of things that I want to see us do more of. And so I think ultimately what we got to do is to make sure that we're finding those ways to build wealth creation, mm -hmm. but on a small level, on a level where we actually are saying, hey, uh, I'm making opportunities for individuals, not just trying to do one big ticket thing all the time. Two more questions. What has been your biggest challenge so far as mayor? Uh, Quick ang answer. Yeah, yeah, anger, anger. People are, uh, people are upset. You know, if you've been living this way, living in this community for like decades, and you're around gunshots, and you're around like some of the stuff that isn't equitable in Kansas City, then I think that makes you upset. Mm -hmm. And so we need to try to make sure we continue to build hope in our community. You mentioned that you are from this community, uh, a proud product of the Kansas City community. Share your vision for uh, uh, to us as mayor yeah. of Kansas City, yeah. Missouri. What do you hope to accomplish real quick? I think Very simply, the, seven, up here. the 17 year old young man in this room needs to have every opportunity in the world to uh, not only succeed, but to run this city, to run its biggest businesses, to have rooms with people who look like him. Too often, right? And we've had a few black mayors now, but I still go to boardrooms and I'm like, dang, ain't nobody else black. We don't create enough opportunities for women of color. And so my big thing is, frankly, that everybody has a chance. And I'll go one step further. I know I'm almost out of time, but it's this. I have a nephew who is uh, a young man, and he was a mediocre student, mediocre student. And that killed his opportunities. He didn't get out of high school, right? He's working hard to try to catch up now. Mm -hmm. That same mediocre student in the suburbs, because I met them and I work with them now, the kid who got the C's out of Blue Valley North High School, what do they become? They become a manager of some bank branch. They're taking care of their family. They have a big house in Johnson County. Mm -hmm. I want to make it so we're not just looking at exceptions getting out. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to be the best student ever to be one of the five brothers and sisters who has a chance. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure there are opportunities for everyone in our community, the C student, the A student, the person we can't get through. And that's my dream for Kansas City in the future. Thank you, Mayor Lucas. Can you tell our viewers how we can connect and keep in yeah. touch with you? Easiest way to call me if you ever need anything, just call 311, ask for the mayor's office. You'd be surprised. 311, ask for the mayor's office. I'm on social media a lot. It's Quentin Lucas, Q-U-I-N-T-O-N-L-U-C-A-S. Just find me on Facebook. People message me all the time. So just try to hit me through one of those. Mayor Lucas, we thank you for your time. We're behind you in this administration. We do hope that we can perhaps follow up sometime yes, in the spring quarter. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Good to be with you, brother. Thank you. This is brought to you by the Location One Building, 1734 East 63rd Street. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself.